Okay. Looking at uh, Merchant of Venus. Just finished a playthrough. How much can I say about this thing? Uh, well, very obviously, uh, from my playthrough, especially the early part where my hatred of counting came through so strongly, this is uh, not a game that I enjoy playing solitaire. I even have trouble with it opposed. Uh, poor shirt. Um, it's the washing machine's fault. I have uh, basically have to sit down and say, okay, I'm just playing this for fun. Uh, I'm not going to try to compete too seriously in this because it, what, what's going to happen is I'm going to get stuck in these AP cycles where I can't figure out you know, which way to move or whatever because of all the counting involved. I'm very bad with counting. Taking classes on counting, uh, they haven't seemed to help somehow. Anyway, uh, I have nothing I can say about the, the new edition. If you're interested in that, you should be getting close to that in the classic. There's, uh, from my understanding, a classic version of the new edition. So you should be getting close to my experiences on that. I think they may have left out the combat, though, which, you know, honestly, every time we played it opposed, we played it once, I think, with combat and nobody used it. <laughs> and from then on, we just said, it's not worth explaining these rules that nobody's going to use. You could see in my playthrough, it barely got used. There was one attempt in three or four places where people were thinking about it. Component-wise, well, the board is functional. It is part of the confusion problem but I can't think of a way to do it better. There's something very clever about the way the movement circles are done and that navigation cycling and everything, and I wouldn't want to take that away from the game uh, by any means, even if it's a pain in the ass. Uh, but it is part of the charm of the game, is that you can't just say, oh, I can move this, I, I'm going to be moving six spaces in this direction like you would in, say, Rail Baron or, or whatever. Instead, here you don't know exactly how far you're going or whether you're going to make it or whatever because of the dice element element of chance, etc. Uh, and given what the game's portraying, I think the board does a very good job. Uh, I do find it difficult, though, to find the cultures because they shift around each game. And even, you know, unless they were fixed each game, and again, that's a part of the design that there's no real way around but adds to the irritation factor for someone like me who has trouble with that. Uh, the little player aid cards, etc. Everybody gets their own card with all the prices of everything on it and uh, all the different kinds of ships, etc. Very, very helpful there. Uh, the little ships themselves are cute and cool and give you something to kind of look at while you're trying to avoid thinking about your turn. Uh, paper money. Standard quality. It's decent. I mean, it, it, it really is, but nothing good to say there, particularly. Uh, the counters are all very good, but man, are they a nightmare to sort. Uh, you have to make a choice. You know, how much how much do you pre-sort the game before when you when you take it down? And this is one of those games. Titans, another one where I have to really sort the game into very heavily uh, between plays, as it were. So. Teardown is very expensive on this one, and still, even so, you got to still sort. Yeah, I guess I could have a bag for each different uh, culture, but the way I do it, I've got all the cultures together, so that still requires some sorting, which would happen at one point or another in the game thing, because everything gets jumbled together. All the goods and the, uh, and the bonuses get jumbled together. Uh, just as an afterthought for the game I just played, one... I looked through uh, all the unknown asteroids. There were maybe four that nobody had explored, although somebody may have spy-eyed them. Uh, one of them was interesting. It was a relic uh, yellow drive, I think. You know, an extra drive that you don't have to put on your ship. That's a bonus, no question. If it doesn't take up any hold space. Um, but yeah, so many relics had come out that people weren't really hunting for them. If there weren't many relics out, people might have been hunting for them. Some of the people with, uh, this should be in the wrap, but you know, some of the people, 
you get what you pay for, right? Uh, some of the people with, uh, like the jump start or uh, the autopilot, and that was one person in my game who had both. That's somebody who might be interested in hunting these things down for additional telegates. But for the most part, it looked like a lot of the relics were in the play. Each player has their own little counter mix that's fine there. Everything's fine there. Uh, but the rule book. Uh, well, the rule book comes with these quick play instructions, which kind of jump you into the game real quick and give you everything that you need to know. But the reality is, if you actually want to play, you probably do need to read the actual rule book. And it's not terribly well organized in my book. Uh, maybe the, the later edition is. I just, I find it, I didn't find it trivial coming back to it to look over and quickly understand it, which is why the introduction was so crappy, actually. Well, I mean, other than me. Um, but what do I think about this game? Because it's kind of a weird situation. It's, to me, it fits kind of with that in terms of how I approach it with uh, Age of Renaissance, which is, wow, this is a game that I will never be able to play really well competitively. Uh, I can play, I think, okay in the game. But the counting factor... And by okay, I mean it, I can usually work real hard at it and do better than some of my opponents will. But it's really unlikely that I'd ever be able to walk out winning a game of this, which is okay in and of itself, except for I don't really want to expend that kind of energy when I know I can't win the game. So I, it's going to infuriate me with the counting and everything and just be this tremendous headache. So for me, it's kind of a... I want to play it as a shits and giggles if I want to play it at all. I want to play it the same way I'd play Axis and Allies or uh, Wizard's Quest, you know? It's, it's something that I'll get a kick out of playing, but I, I, I really don't want to play it competitively. And I understand that there are people who take this game very, very seriously. Of course, there are people who take the uh, crayon rails very seriously, too. And... There's kind of this, okay, well, I don't want to spoil your game by just kind of enjoying myself with this. And that's kind of troubling because I don't, I don't know if I should, you know, force myself into the AP situation or just say, you know, the hell with it. I can get a kick out of sailing around, seeing what I find, and then trying to guess whether I can get to a route and, oh, shit, I didn't make it. I got a bad turn. Uh, and maybe I'll get lucky and... And, and that uh, I'll certainly have a better time, and probably everybody else will too. Uh, but it's hard for me to put myself in that, that situation because I'm playing games with the feeling that I should be really trying to win. Even if winning isn't necessarily the biggest thing for me. Anyway, uh, that's kind of where it puts it for me. However, when I look at the game itself, there's so much cleverness in it. You know, the whole... Uh, when you start to look at, say, how supply and demand is handled in it, my first thought is, ah, shit, come on. You know, there's nothing here. But the truth of the matter is, as you deliver things, the demand is going down in the places you're delivering it to. It's likely rising, although you don't have a lot of control over it. It's a nice little mechanism for doing that without, you know, die rolls every turn, etc. But then, there is the complexity in a mechanical sense, just like with die rolls, of every time you sell something, you got to throw it back in the cup, shake the cup, pull a piece. Very simple in terms of not having to look up charts all the time, like in Star Trader, which has a really nice supply and demand system that's purely intuitive. You just look at it and you say, yeah, that's how I would do it. You know, <laughs> This, it doesn't have that, but I think it does work very well. It still has that mechanical cost, though, and I don't think there's a way around that, to tell you the truth. At least not an easy way. I think this one actually has more of a mechanical cost and more of a chance of screwing up. Uh, I think quite often people either throw chips in there without drawing, or maybe draw an extra chip because they think they threw chips in without drawing. Uh, there's a lot of awareness that has to be there for everyone. Now, it's not a game breaker if somebody screws something up. Uh, 
but it does kind of bring into question that whole, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to win this one. Um, because you may not really be playing it right <laughs> just because somebody's asleep at the table or whatever. Uh, it gives you some really neat choices. To a large extent, you want to be in the area of the universe that nobody else is in. But, that may not always be the case. Uh, why is that not the case? Well, one reason is the combat rules. If you're playing with those, hanging around with other people when you're the most heavily armed ship around, gives you some slight extra advantages. Now, I've never seen anybody playing that way, because the truth is, Early on, you end up not being able to afford weaponry, really, except what you need to get through the asteroids in terms of shields or whatever. And then as you get later and later through the game, well, you've gotten in certain patterns, and you're playing the game probably as this, I'm going to try to optimize my roots, and I'm going to not try to compete with other people if I can help it, because if I can find a clean little area of my own, I can make some money in it. But a lot of it really is looking at the board and finding out and figuring out where the good stuff is, where the good roots are. After the map kind of develops, you have this initial random, you know, setup that you have to explore. But then there's a problem. You can't just go running off to where things are good. You can't waste three turns or whatever, uh, even if you're going to make some payoff on it. So you kind of stuck with, hey, where did I go explore, what did I find, and now what can I do with this? And maybe I can start moving further into where things are more valuable. But a lot of it, I think, really does depend on what you find randomly at first. Hey, what'd you find on those asteroids, man? If you got a uh, jump start and there are a lot of telegates, that's sweet. Uh, if you've got jump start and mulligan gear, <laughs> you know, uh, if you've got a number of things, switch, switch, wow, that allows you to work through the, the cloud better, although I have trouble with that because you get in one line of thinking and then once you get switch, switch, it all changes, right? Uh, that's especially bad with the solitaire because I've got five people without it. And if any of them are fiddling around in the, those navigation circles, then the one guy who gets the bonus is talking about. But when you're actually playing it opposed, uh, it's a little easier to get in the memory of what you're using. But overall, the relics, any relics you find, bonus deal. You know, I mean, most of them are good. You want them on your ship. If they're not, early in the game, they're a good payoff. Now, that's the problem with them late in the game. Especially if you think you've got most of the good ones. Hey, uh... I'm not sure I really want to waste a turn uh, going and looking for something that's on the belt but hasn't been in the normal patterns that people have been taking. Because those normal patterns exist for a reason. The places that are well-traveled, they're well-traveled because that's where the roots are. So you're kind of going out of your way or maybe there's some kind of astro astrogation hazard, you know, a, a, a 40 point blast that you, you don't want to go through. And you just don't want to do the exploration because you can save a few pips or something and you, and you get out of that mindset. The game's very much one of mindsets and especially for me it's very hard to shake whatever mindset I'm in. I'm optimizing my, I'm optimizing my trade routes from the middle of the game onward I stop kind of considering, ah, oh, I got an asteroid there I could go check. I don't know what's there. Especially once Spy Eye's been in the game, you know, he's checked a few of them. Well, what hasn't he checked? I don't remember. <laughs> you know? uh, so a lot of stuff there where you kind of start deciding that you don't really, you don't really know enough anymore, maybe, to make the informed choices you want to make. You also have a lot of randomness, what comes out of the cup. You know, you could get bonused into uh, stuff just keeping your root alive just by random chance. We see that happen, I think, in the game that I ha had going, where someone, you know, was running a little root, thought they had panned it out, they get to go around again. 
and then they get to go around again because someone else just keeps drawing enough stuff. Now that's a lot harder when you got the big ships and the big ships is the hard choice to make. You know you can haul more stuff. That first big ship you get, you know, you know, you're looking, you're saying, ah, I can haul four things here and then five here, wow. You're going to go slower, okay. But what you may forget is that the market gets tapped out much quicker. Uh, so yeah, you know, you use your little route, but then it's burned. And now you've got a slow ship and you've got to go someplace further from your little route. And that's kind of a, a tough thing. Of course, you can fix that, especially with a huge two-die ship, uh, by getting, you know, putting a drive or two drives inside uh, inside your hold. Um, you still come out with an extra hold that way and your movement tends to be better but you have less navigation options because you have less dice that you're rolling. Relics here are great. You know, hey, I got a relic drive. That's bonus. I know there's one. Uh, I saw it. I think there's only the one, the yellow drive. Um, the combined drive is such a sweet thing but it's so expensive. 300 bucks, that's a ship, you know. It's a, a, a big percentage of your money. I don't think I'd ever see one of them come out in anything but the $4,000 game. I would see the heavy ships come out in shorter games. It seems like they're not worth it but honestly they make their investment up very quickly. But the extra movement from the combined drive is so hard to justify unless you know you're going a long game. And you have to have the hull space for it. You have to have the holds for it. And the only ship that seems to is that huge ship. That ship's such a hard, hard choice to make because you put up a lot of money up front. It's slow as hell. You're not sure you're really going to make that much off of it. But, well, one of the players who had it was right up there in the running. The other one, totally out of it. Uh, but anyway, you know, I mean, lots and lots of options here. Lots of different choices as to, you know, how you want to go about your routes? Do you want to be the guy who chases down the uh, uh, the bonuses in this game? That didn't happen too often. People pretty much settled into their routes, and there were some people who never really got one, but people who settled into their routes watched bonuses happen to them. But every now and then, especially because of the jump gates, the, the quantity of them that showed up on this board, and they really kind of fold space. Most of the game just says, hey, there's different cultures here, here, and here, but the jump gates say, okay, but there's a line that connects these two most of the time if you've got a fast enough ship that it can jump through it, that it has enough dice, or you have the right dice with something like uh, the autopilot or uh, the mulligan gear. So, you know, I really do understand why this game is so well liked. I just the thought that's involved in it is so much the kind that hurts me. And I've given it a 7, mainly on respect, because probably enjoyment-wise, it, it would dip quite a bit. Especially playing the full thing out, I just, I get so, uh, it gets so fatiguing after a while. And maybe I should just not play the long game as much, but I always feel like I should play the long game. I'm more interested in the um, the amount of strategy involved in the long game where you do go through and I think an additional period in the game. There's three real periods. There's the exploration period, then there's the settled roots period, and then finally there's kind of this, alright, I'm trying to run for victory and the universe has gotten really sparse in terms of opportunities. At least when you got, have a lot of players. When you don't have a lot of players the universe just stays wealthy all game long. It's it's really hard to tap it out. Um, of course, less stuff's getting drawn, so you're getting less replenishment, but the commodities sort of stay there to a larger extent, and you can find new areas where there's a lot of riches. Even if you tap out your area, you can find a new one fairly easily and run it for a while. I think you'd probably have more problems with that if you, you started using the heavy ships. Though. Anyway... Uh, it's a good game. I'm really glad it got reprinted. I was always very excited about this when I first would play it. 
the first few times I played it, I was so excited about the game itself, the idea, the way it all hangs together so neat. Uh, but my experience of enjoyment of it was always a disappointment at the end of the whole thing, just in terms of the amount of effort that one has to put it, that I have to put in, in order to be competitive in it, that it kind of soured the whole whole thing on me uh, a good deal. But And it obviously is not the best game to so solo, and it's particularly uninteresting, I think, videoing. I'm impressed, anybody who watched uh, all the videos, I, I, I have to give you a big hand because it, it's not like some games, it just doesn't provide a good view of the world. Just wait till uh, we get uh, Star Trader up there. That's a good space uh, trading game. And I've got a couple others that I haven't seen yet uh, on the line. Like, I've heard some really interesting things about this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this on a video. Maybe yeah, I've heard it's all paperwork. <laughs> all right, up it goes.